Hi everybody, this is Scott Crawley over at Sharp Focus Media Academy. We've been doing a lot of on-site training at various post-production houses in Hollywood over the past couple of months, and one of the questions that we hear quite often from professional editors, especially in the trailer industry, is how to do a ring-out effect. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a ring-out effect is, I will explain it to you right now. If we come down and take a look at my timeline, I have a section of audio right here, and let's say I want this particular chunk of waveforms to extend out all the way to the end of my video clip, and I would want that particular section of waveforms to ring out with a reverb effect. Unfortunately, if we did add a reverb effect and then keyframed it all the way out this way, the reverb would take effect on all of these waveforms right here, and we might not necessarily want to hear that. So if we were to close this back down, what a lot of editors used to do was create a in point right here, and then an out point at wherever they want the reverb to end, and then most likely they would either solo the track and then go export this particular in and out section into a new audio file. They have to decide where it's going to live on the hard drive, and then more importantly, they would have to re-import that file and then overcut it into their timeline. Thankfully, Adobe has created a dynamic link between Premiere Pro and Adobe Audition that allows us to do this a little bit faster. So I'm going to clear my in and out point and I'm going to go ahead and use my blade tool right or your razor tool or cut tool or whatever you want to call it I'm gonna cut right there and now I have this chunk that I want to reverb out now before we do this I'll go ahead and show you what the timeline looks like so you can see why we'd want to reverb. So what I've done here is created a very simple rudimentary edit of yours truly doing a pretty nasty self alley-oop dunk on an 8 foot rim. Let's take a look at it. Alright, pretty impressive huh? Especially for an old fat guy like me. Anyway, I'm sure you guys noticed that the audio drops off very abruptly. And what I would want to do here is extend this out with a ring out only of just this last beat or melodic uh, note, so to speak, and have it extend out as I walk off screen out of breath. So what we'd want to do now that we've cut that right here, we would want to highlight this clip. And if you are a paying member or a subscriber of Adobe Creative Cloud Master Suite, you should be able to right click on the file or the clip and come up to edit clip in Adobe Audition. Now when you click this, it will automatically import this clip into Audition. And now you've seen that this has changed into its own independent clip. And I can tell you that's true because of the corners up in the top right and left hand side of this clip. This is telling me this is a new media file. It's created a new file and it's imported it into Adobe Audition. Sure enough, if we check out Audition, here it is. I see that my song that it was originally titled Playboy, it's now created a file called Playboy Audio Extracted.wave. And here it is. Let's listen to it. Okay. And it is still dropping off abruptly at the end of these waveforms. So what we want to do is add some silence to the end of this. So make sure that you put your playhead at the very end of the clip. And we want to come up and go to the Edit menu, come down to Insert, and select Silence that will open up a dialog box and you can choose how many seconds uh, you want of silence. I'm gonna go ahead, it already is uh, three seconds, but I'll just type the number three in just to show you that it's that simple. And when I hit okay, we see that now there are three seconds of silence added to the end of this waveform. Now this is selected, so we'd probably want to click off of it to deselect just that section, or you could also, if you uh, really like being diligent, you could hit Command A to select the entire timeline here. And now the reverb effect will happen to all of this. So if we come up to the effects drop down menu, we come down to reverb and you will notice that there are several options for reverb. I recommend if you have time, go ahead and try them all out and see what sort of parameters you're able to adjust. I have a tendency to use studio reverb. I don't know why I've just had some decent uh, results from this. So when I hit okay, 
we can come up to the presets and we see that there are several presets that we can start off with. I'm going to go ahead and just start off with Great Hall and see what we can do. When we're trying to do a reverb effect or uh, a ring out, most of the time I drag out the room size. I increase the room size. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go to 100. I'm going to exaggerate a lot of things here just so you guys can really hear the effect that it's creating. Uh, a lot of times wetness, increasing the wetness helps out as well. Maybe I will bring up the width and uh, the decay. And instead of hitting apply down here, because if we were to just hit apply, it would immediately apply that, but then you really couldn't go in and tweak the effects. You'd have to undo, go up into the effect menu and start all over from scratch. So don't hit apply yet. We want to preview this effect first with the preview play stop button. Let's try it out. Okay, try that one more time. Hopefully you guys can hear the effect that it's created. And you can see the waveforms uh, in the decimal meter bouncing down here, thus telling us that this is no longer silence, okay? So, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply, and now you can see that the waveforms have extended out into a reverb all the way to the very end of that, and there we go. So, all we have to do at this point is save it. We don't have to save a project. We can just hit Command S to save in Adobe Audition. So, I'm going to hit Command S right now. And if we come back over to Adobe Premiere Pro, like so, we now see that the triangle that was once on the end in the top corner right here is no longer there, thus telling us that we should have some handle to pull out right here, like so. And you can see that the original waveforms that were spiking over here are no longer here, and we see that this is now a new clip with the same waveforms right here, but it created a, um, a reverb all the way to the end. Now maybe I'm just going to go ahead and apply a default transition here, a uh, nice constant power fade or whatever you want to do, and that will fade out as my visuals fade out to black. So let's try it out and see what happens. All right, we can always come down here, adjust the volume, do whatever we want to it to blend it together, to make it sound a little bit more natural. I wanted you to notice though, up here in our project window, not only do we have our original file, it also created and imported the Playboy Audio Extracted WAV file from Adobe Audition. Now, not only did it import it here, I wanted to show you where it actually lives on your finder level. If we right click, you can come to reveal in finder and your finder window should pop up and it shows me here in my audio folder for this particular assets project. It is in here, here's my original, here's the audio extracted. You can see that it's only 1.3 megabytes in size where the original file was 7.2 megs. And this must live here for it to remain online, just like any other piece of media in Premiere Pro. So if I were to move this, let's say I worked at a post-production house that had a server-based media delivery system, I might not want the audio extracted uh, reverb effect or ring out effect to stay in the folder that where the original file lives. That could get kind of cluttered if many editors are using the same files. So let's say I had a folder out here called ring outs, I could always move it there. And now that we've moved it, if we come back to Premiere, we see that it has gone offline, okay? It brings up our link media window. We should be able to just hit locate and we can go find it if we know where it is, ideally. And there it is. And I can come down here and hit OK, and now it is back online, and we are good to go. So that is how to do a ring out effect using Adobe Premiere Pro and tag teaming in Adobe Audition using dynamic linking. Hopefully you will find out how easy this is and how much of a time saver it can be. Again, this is Scott Crawley at Sharp Focus Media Academy. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about this or perhaps you'd like to see us do a different tutorial with Premiere Pro or any of the other Adobe softwares, please feel free to contact us at info at sharpfocusmediaacademy.com. Thanks again. Have a great day.